to make a donation, visit biblicallycorrectpodcast.org slash donate. And if you enjoy this episode, please like, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Thank you for your support. What does Passover have to do with who you are in Messiah? Welcome to the Biblically Correct Podcast. Shalom, y'all. This is the Biblically Correct Podcast, teaching biblical correctness in a biblically incorrect world. My name is Kevin Jeffrey. I'm a Jewish follower of the Messiah Yeshua, Jesus, and I love teaching the scriptures. Every year at Passover, we remember how the people of Israel were slaves in Egypt, oppressed and in bondage under the hand of a cruel taskmaster, but then powerfully delivered and redeemed by God's mighty hand and outstretched arm. Passover, then, is about freedom and the extreme lengths to which God will go to set his people free. And that's why, for a whole week every year, beginning at Passover, God commands Israel to eat only food made without leaven, to eat matzah as a reminder of how God brought freedom to Israel and rescued them from their slavery in Egypt forever. But as vitally important as it is to recall the Exodus in this special, tangible way, there's also a significant spiritual meaning to the matzah. This Feast of Unleavened Food is also meant to remind us of something extremely important about ourselves. Today, I want to encourage and exhort you from the scriptures about a spiritual aspect of Passover that gets little attention. Not only will this teaching help you inwardly prepare yourself for this upcoming Passover season, but it'll bring to light a spiritual picture found in the matzah that'll both reveal and convict your heart of your true reality in Yeshua. Now, just to give you some frame of reference, there's a specific reason why matzah plays such an important role during Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the seven-day feast that immediately follows Passover. After God's relentless display of power that finally convinced Pharaoh to let the people of Israel go, the Egyptians, in fear for their lives, quickly drove Israel out of Egypt. So quickly, in fact, that they didn't even have time to leaven their bread. Exodus chapter 12, verses 34 and 39 say, And the people took up their dough before it was leavened, their kneading troughs being bound up in their garments on their shoulder. And they baked discs of matzah, unleavened bread, with the dough which they had brought out from Egypt, for it had not been leavened, for they had been driven out of Egypt and had not been able to delay. So the matzah, or unleavened bread, is a symbol of the haste with which Israel left Egypt. This is why Deuteronomy 16.3 calls it the bread of affliction. While they were in Egypt, despite being heavily oppressed in slavery, they still had the daily luxury of leavening their bread. Leavening, such as yeast, permeates and ferments the dough, causing it to rise and expand as it bakes, rather than remaining flat. But now that Israel was on the run and homeless, they no longer had the time to indulge themselves with leaven, for now they had to make do only with matzah. So this is the backstory to the commands to eat only unleavened things during the feast, commands such as in Exodus 13, 3, 6, and 8, where Moses says, Remember this day in which you have gone out from Egypt, from the house of slaves, for by strength of hand, has Adonai brought you out from this, and nothing leavened may be eaten. Seven days you will eat matzot, and you will declare to your son in that day, saying, It is because of what Adonai did to me in my going out from Egypt. So the matzah would now represent Israel's new life, no longer the life of bondage and slavery with the illusion of comfort and ease that they left behind, but a life of true liberty that they were now walking without restraint, one that would still have its share of struggles and hardship, but would still be with God and would finally be free. But not only did God command this seven-day memorial feast for eating matzah, a reminder of God's deliverance, he also commanded it as a seven-day fast from leaven, a reminder of the slavery from which they were set free. As Moses says in Exodus 13, 7, Matzot will be eaten for the seven days, and nothing leavened may be seen with you. Yes, leaven may not be seen with you 
within all your territory. And in Exodus 12, 15, he adds, seven days you will eat only matzot. On the first day, remove the leaven from your houses. So leaven isn't just forbidden for eating during the feast. Moses also says that it can't even occupy the same space where you live. For seven days, nothing leavened can be seen with you or found anywhere within your territory. And on the first day, it has to be completely removed from your home. As a symbol of a former way of life in slavery, this act of purging leaven from where you live is both defiant and cleansing. It's an annual act of remembrance of what God did to give Israel the power to reject a past that no longer had any control over them. And by removing the leaven, again, as a symbol of slavery, it also removes the temptation to return to it again, just as Israel wrongly wanted to do when they wandered the desert, saying that it would have been better for them if they had remained slaves in Egypt. By commanding a fast from and removal of leaven, God is further reinforcing the distinction between slavery and freedom, a distinction between the bondage that holds us back from serving God and the freedom that equips us to follow him. When we physically remove and abstain from leaven during the feast, we're also symbolically and spiritually cleansing ourselves from a former way of life. So while all this rich spiritual meaning is already baked into the Torah commands for leavened and unleavened things, the significance of the matzah is even further deepened by the Master Yeshua himself. He teaches us this during the last Passover he celebrated with his disciples by connecting himself to the Exodus. According to Matthew 26, 26, as they were eating, Yeshua, having taken some matzah bread and having blessed it, broke it and giving it to the disciples, said, Take, eat. And in Luke twenty two nineteen, 19, he added, This is my body that is being given for you. Do this to the remembrance of me. So here, Yeshua is foreshadowing what was about to happen to him when he would give his literal physical body as a substitutionary sacrifice for our sins. So when he says of the matzah, this is my body, do this to the remembrance of me, he's linking the annual remembrance of the events of the Exodus to himself. Just as the lamb's blood on that very first Passover in Egypt was painted on the doorposts of Israel's homes, causing God to pass over them and save them from the plague of the death of the firstborn, the innocent blood of the Lamb of God, Yeshua, would be shed on behalf of the world, so that God's judgment would pass over anyone who believes in him, causing us to be saved from eternal death. So while Yeshua spiritually fulfilled the Passover through the shedding of his blood, setting us free from enslavement to death, he also showed us himself in the matzah, the symbol of the exodus from Egypt, indicating that through him we can also make an exodus from our past sinful selves. We can be delivered from who we used to be without Yeshua, leave it behind, and now walk in the freedom of our new and eternal life. So the matzah represents our ability and responsibility in Yeshua to walk in that costly freedom from sin which he bought for us. This is exactly what Paul's talking about in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, when he alludes to the commanded removal of leaven from the home as an example of how we're to live in Messiah. Verses 6 through 8 says, Have you not known that a little leaven leavens the whole batch of dough? Clean out the old leaven, so that you may be a new batch of dough, because you are unleavened. For our Pesach, our Passover, Messiah was also sacrificed so that we may keep the feast, not with old leaven, nor with the leaven of evil and wickedness, but with the matzah of purity and truth. So Paul's saying that Yeshua's Passover sacrifice for us was not only to free us from enslavement to sin and death, but also so that we may keep the feast. In other words, the feast represents our life in Yeshua. And Paul says that now that we're in Messiah, there are two batches of dough, two identities by which we can try to live that life and keep the feast, so to speak. 
and he's exhorting us to choose the right one. Will we continue to live as our old selves, to be the old leaven of sin and the flesh, of evil and wickedness? Or will we follow Yeshua in our new life in him, to be a new creature, a new batch of dough, the matzah of purity and truth? This is an exhortation that Paul drills into us again and again, as he does in Romans chapter 6, verses 6 through 11, when he reminds us that our old man was crucified with Yeshua, so that the body of the sin may be made useless for the purpose of our no longer serving the sin. For he who has died has been set free from the sin. And if we died with Messiah, we believe that we also will live with him. So also you, Consider yourselves to be dead indeed to the sin and living to God in Messiah Yeshua. And again, in Ephesians 4, through 24, he says, you are to put off the old man concerning the former behavior that is corrupt according to the lusts of the deceit and to be renewed in the ruach of your mind, the spirit of your mind, and to put on the new man, which according to God, was created in righteousness and undefiledness of the truth. So because our old sinful self was crucified with Messiah, we're now dead to sin, set free from it, no longer required to serve it, and now able to serve our God. So it's not only ridiculous and insane, but a disgraceful defilement of Yeshua's sacrifice when we keep hauling around that dead, rotten, sinful carcass as if we were still that old self. Just picture that corpse of the former you with its arms wrapped around your neck, dragging it around like a big, heavy cape and pretending that's what you really are. Paul says to put off that old corrupt man, to stop our former evil and sinful behavior and to instead put on the new righteous man in Yeshua, to step into that brand new clean and perfect skin the one that was created to be undefiled by sin. This is what Paul's talking about when he tells us to clean out the old leaven, just like Israel was commanded to remove the leaven from their homes, to not even be seen with it anywhere they go. Paul says, have you not known that a little leaven leavens the whole batch? He's likening leaven to sin and the way it insidiously permeates every open area of our lives until it expands and spreads to fill up our entire being with darkness. Like leaven during the feast, he's exhorting us to clean out the sin and fleshly behavior from our lives, to look for it, locate it, and then throw it out, to completely get rid of it and never again take it back, to purge ourselves forever of the things that tempt us and cause us to defile ourselves so that you, Paul says, may be a new batch of dough in Messiah. And why does Paul say you need to do this? Because you're free. Because you're no longer serving a cruel taskmaster. Because you're no longer bound by sin and death. Because now that you're in Messiah, you are unleavened. That's who you really are. You're no longer a slave in Egypt. You're no longer that former sinful self. You're no longer that old, evil, and wicked leaven. As Paul says in 2 Corinthians 5.17, Therefore, if anyone is in Messiah, he is a new creature. The old things have passed away. Look, he has become new. Your reality now in Messiah is that you are unleavened. You are the matzah. You are a new creation without sin. And to continue to walk in sin, to go back to Egypt, is to rebuke God, to forsake your freedom, to voluntarily put yourself under a yoke of slavery, and to walk contrary to your new reality in him. The matzah, then, is that tangible, visual, edible reminder of what Yeshua did for you, to make you who you truly are and who you're truly supposed to be, unleavened and without sin. And every bite you take testifies of Yeshua's sacrifice, how he set you free forever from captivity to sin and death, 
how he quickly and victoriously led you out of that slavery and who he eternally changed you and remade you to be. And for seven days every year, this is the reality that followers of Yeshua can acknowledge and practice as a memorial and renewal of our new unleavened creation in Yeshua. So as we again approach the Passover season, I want to encourage you to start making yourself ready now to prepare your spirit to enter fully into the appointed time with these thoughts in your heart and mind. Remember that Passover is about freedom and the extreme lengths to which God and his one and only son will go to set his people free. And then once we have that freedom, once we've been passed over for judgment, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the Feast of Matzah, which celebrates the exodus from Egypt, tells us to leave that old life of slavery behind and actively walk in our redemption, deliverance, and freedom. The cleaning out and removal of leaven and leavened food from our homes is the perfect time to reflect upon and reaffirm your commitment to Messiah and to choose once again to be a new unleavened batch of dough. Take advantage of the God-appointed time to examine the spiritual leaven that's still lurking around and swelling into the corners of your life. Use it to look closely at yourself, your attitudes, thoughts, activities, behavior, and priorities, and to identify the sinful and fleshly things that are long past time for you to get rid of. Allow yourself to feel the conviction of the Spirit, to be motivated by the grief and shame of knowing that by walking in sin and the flesh that you've rebuked and defiled God's gift of salvation. But then, repent. Remove that sin from your life. Remember who you truly are in Messiah. Be cleansed in God's forgiveness. And then, for the seven days of the feast, literally and figuratively, eat matzah and walk. Walk in purity, walk in truth, fast from sin, feast in unleavenedness. With your home and every space you occupy purged of leaven, remember the way of life you're supposed to leave behind and never return to again. Consciously avoid your fleshly triggers and actively refuse to indulge yourself in sin's illusions of comfort and pleasure, making that one unstained, unleavened week a practice in discipline for every day of your life. And when you eat the matzah, when you feast upon it for a full seven days, remember your new life in Yeshua, that despite any hardships or struggles you may still have, that in Messiah, you're no longer bound and defined by slavery to sin and death. You've been released from their captivity forever, and you are now free. Nothing is truly holding you back from serving God in holiness. You've been equipped with everything you need to never see Egypt again. Now it's up to you to turn your back on your former way of life and walk away from it in the reality of your freedom. Because Messiah, our Passover, has been sacrificed. So this year, when you keep the feast, keep it not with old leaven, nor with the leaven of evil and wickedness, but with the matzah of purity and truth. Remember that you are the matzah. You are a new creation made without sin. Now walk without bondage in your freedom in Messiah, in the new reality that you are unleavened. Thanks for joining me for this episode of the Biblically Correct Podcast. If you like this episode and want to see us make more, then we need your help. Visit our website at biblicallycorrectpodcast.org to support the work of Perfect Word Ministries and MJMI with your much-needed donations. And of course, don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe, and ring the bell to receive notifications whenever a new episode is posted. If you have any questions about this teaching, or if there are any other topics you'd like to see me cover, leave me a comment or shoot me an email at Kevin at perfectword.org. That's Kevin at perfectword.org. Until next time, remember that every scripture is God-breathed and profitable for teaching, for refuting, for setting a right, 
and for instruction that is in righteousness, so that the man of God may be fully equipped, having been completed for every good act. Shalom.